Okanagan Valley Radio is pleased to present For the Health of It with Tanya Gustafson. Tanya is an internationally certified and licensed nutritionist and fitness coach, helping people to live longer, stronger, healthier, better lives, naturally. Currently, Tanya is one of the only five health professionals in Canada, coaching people on how to use blood sugar stabilization to lose weight and achieve and maintain their health goals, not by dieting. For the Health of It is a weekly podcast where Tanya will be sharing practical health tips and strategies, along with the occasional recipe and guest speakers with information that will ultimately spark healthy changes. Because as Tanya says, if you don't take care of your body, where will you live? And now, here's your host, Tanya Gustafson. Good morning, everyone. This is Tanya Gustafson, your nutritionist and fitness coach, and welcome to today's episode of For the Health of It. Glad to have you listening in today. Congratulations to you for taking the time to invest in your health. Wonderful. Always love to hear that. So we've got a great show for you today. Uh, We're going to continue with our six-part series on the six six components of health. Today is number three. We're going to be talking about water, all the great benefits, and why we need to stay hydrated. And a lot of times we're not really thinking about that as the weather gets cooler. We tend to think about it more in the summer, but it's just as important even as the sun is not shining so brightly out there lately. Uh, We've also got a few things I'd like to touch on and just uh, pique your interest. There's a few events I have coming up in Kelowna, one coming up uh, today, actually, as you're listening to this, it will be later this afternoon. So Saturday afternoon from 1 to 3, I will be hosting an event at my office, and we'll talk about that later. It's going to help you win with your food and weight over the holidays, so avoid gaining that holiday 10 pounds this year. No more making um, New Year's resolutions around weight loss. So it's just a fun little party I'm hosting and we'll get into that a little bit later. And uh, also an opportunity uh, for um, coaching. There's on my website, you can check out that at fuelignitethrive.com. So let's get into it today, talking about water and why we need it. I mean, everybody knows that we need to drink a certain amount of water every day, right? And um, But do we? And, you know, in my experience, as people come in my door, they come in for an assessment or they come in for some coaching or um, some advice or some fitness programs, whatever it happens to be, and they come in and, and, I, and one of the questions I always ask is, how much water are you drinking every day? And usually the, the, uh, the responses are, not enough, I should drink more, or oh, and then they give me that look like, yeah, I don't really drink a lot of water, or at all. So, uh, you know, some people are just drinking a lot of coffee, some people are drinking a lot of soda, some people just aren't drinking liquids very much at all, and um, we need to change that because there's a lot of benefits for keeping your body hydrated. And I like to give you a little visual here, seeing as we're on the radio and I can't show you any pictures, but think about... um, a grape. A grape is nice and plump. It's nice and firm. It's juicy inside. There's no wrinkles or blemishes on the outside. And then think of a raisin. So that's the visual I want you to think about. So there's a lot more liquid inside the grape than there is inside the raisin, correct? And what happened to the raisin is it all dried up and it shriveled. And so those are sort of what your cells are doing inside when we're missing a lot of that water and we're dehydrating, we're getting dehydrated, we're depriving ourselves of of enough fluids. Uh, Not intentionally, you know, I'm sure we don't really want to do that, but a lot of times people get busy or they just don't feel thirsty is the other thing that I hear a lot. And so with that, um, you know, you want to keep that in mind. You want to be a grape, not a raisin, okay? So we could even title the show today, Be a Grape not a raisin. So there's quite a few benefits of drinking water. So so here we go. Let's touch on a few of them as we um, get started today. If anyone's having joint pain or having trouble moving or feeling stiff, you may be considering, you know, you may be um, low on fluids and you might want to try increasing that and see. So if you're a, a lady out there listening, the ideal amount that you want to aim for to uh, stay hydrated during the day is between you know eight and twelve glasses of water per day. So that's two to three liters per day. Gentlemen, for all you guys listening out there, you want to aim for three to four liters per day. So thinking about that, you know, and some people are going to say, "Wow, that's a lot of water," and "Oh my gosh, I'm going to run be running to the bathroom a ton." Well, that's not always the case, and we'll get back to that afterwards. So. Um, so keep listening. 
So lubricating the joints, we have cartilage in our joints and the discs in our spine and all of those things are about 80% water. So again, think about the grape and the raisin, right? Um, depriving yourself of, too, of enough liquid for a long period of time can cause dehydration within those joints. So it's reducing the joint's ability to absorb shock and, and you know, that can result in joint pain because there's not enough in there to keep it uh, plumped up and, and uh, squishy. So you're not getting enough of the... Um, of the shock absorption and then therefore you can have pain right because things are are banging together where they wouldn't normally be uh, also you know just like your car we put fluids in our car to keep things moving um, freely without getting stuck our bodies are a vehicle that drives us through life right here's just a little uh, aside here I was talking with somebody yesterday about uh, how some people tend to take care of their cars a lot better than they take care of their bodies, right? And I know that's none of you out there listening, right? But we probably know somebody who, who does. And if we thought about it in a way like, if I only ever had one car, the one car I have in my driveway is the only car I'm ever going to have, you know, how would you take care of it? you definitely be washing it more, cleaning it out more, getting more services done, you know, making sure that it's running tip top because you don't want to get stranded anywhere. You want to be able to go on road trips. You, you know, if that's the only vehicle you have, you're going to be looking after it like top notch. Well, you know, heads up, our body is the only vehicle that we have that gets us through life, right? There's no trade-ins. There's no um, Black Friday deals happening here for this. There's no trade-ins, trade-ups, or anything like that. We just, we have only one, and so we need to take care of it just like, or if not better than, if we only had one car or truck or whatever vehicle that's in our driveway and how we would take care of that. So the same focus needs to apply, or better, actually. Um, so it just kind of gives you another uh, little uh, perspective to think about. So another reason for um, for drinking some water, it helps digest our food. It helps the saliva and everything to form in our mouths, keeps our mouths, nose, and eyes moist. We don't want dryness in there. You know, things can crack and bleed, especially this time of year when, it's, um, when the air is very dry. Uh, so it prevents the friction and damage. Helps keep our mouth clean. And when we take... Uh, water instead of sweetened beverages it also helps of course with our with our teeth right we don't have all that sugar sitting on our teeth it also helps with um you know if you're eliminating those sugared beverages which i totally uh recommend that you do and that does not mean switching from regular pop to uh, diet pop you know because those chemicals in there the aspartame the sucralose um, whatever that happens to be is just poison it's a carcinogen it is toxic so stay away from that. It's nasty stuff. Here's another, another little story for you. This summer, um, I had a little ant problem at the corner of my garden outside in the back, and they were just swarming. There was a big, about the size of a dinner plate of, of this whole little pile of ants. And I really hate using toxins or poisons. I don't want to put that in my yard. We have a cat that we let out in the yard sometimes, and we don't want to put anything out there. So I was trying to think, what do I do with that? And and my husband and I were, were going out for a walk, and I had just read something on um, aspartame and sucralose and, you know, how toxic it was and it's toxic to um, its toxicity levels and all that kind of stuff. And so we, we went for a little walk. We ended up at the Starbucks. My husband was grabbing a coffee, and they had those little packets of the sweet and low and, and the other kind of, you know, there's a yellow packet, there's a pink packet. There's all those different kinds. Basically, it's your fake sugars, right, your imitation sugars. So my husband says, hey, you should grab a couple of those. Maybe it'll work on those ants. I thought, hey, there's a thought. So I wish I had taken a picture because I did. I took them home. I took a couple packets home, and I just went outside, and I sprinkled it around where all the ants were. And uh, I did not stand there to watch or anything. I just sprinkled and then off I went. I had other things to do. And I went back the next day and checked it out and all the ants were gone. So yeah, just a little caveat there. If the animals aren't eating it or if they're dying off because they're eating it, we should not be consuming that and putting that in our body. Okay. Um, the water that we're taking in also helps to deliver oxygen through our body. And we definitely want that. So our blood is about 90% water. And the blood carries oxygen to different parts of the body. Now that's going to help with your energy level. It's, it helps to, um, we need that blood flowing. We need it um, also, it, it helps with the, uh, 
the consistency of our blood. If we don't have enough, it can get thicker and thicker and thicker over time, and then it can cause um, high blood pressure because it's, it's, it's not flowing freely as it should be. And if uh, health concerns aren't uh, piquing your interest or, or um, prompting you to go grab a drink of water at this point, it can make you look prettier, make you have nicer skin, nicer hair, um, all that sort of stuff. When we dehydrate, of course, there's that raisin again. Nobody wants to look like a raisin. We don't think about it so much on the inside because we can't see it. But nobody really wants their skin to become all crepey and wrinkly. And, you know, as we get older, uh, you, you've seen people, right? Like you've seen... Um, people who have really great skin and they're older and then you've seen people that are not even quite as old and they have really, really wrinkly, dry skin or crepey looking skin and that comes from um, being dehydrated. A lot of that, it can also come from smoking. There's another uh, smoking and excessive alcohol use will also cause that. Other things that will dehydrate the body, too much caffeine, not enough water, again, dehydrates the body. So when we're putting in all these extra things and we talked about that stimulants and and uh, toxins and stuff the other day on the last show. When we're putting in too many things like that um, and not enough water, then it's going to um, counteract that and, and cause these um, really not so nice side effects. So it can also cause skin disorders along with the premature wrinkling and then you're losing the elasticity in your skin so then your skin gets droopy, you get the bags under the eyes all that sort of stuff and so nobody wants premature wrinkling, nobody wants the bags under their eyes um, but nobody also wants skin disorders, right? You know, that's that's not a great thing either. Now, I'm not saying that if you're going to go and fill up your water bottle and, and chug a whole bunch of water bottles right now that your your skin's going to instantly plump out. It's not, right? It's a, it's Remember, it's what we do, those small things we do consistently over time. So if you've done not drink water consistently over time, it's going to take a while to build that back up again, right? Like try hydrating a raisin, you know, like you put it in, it's gonna have to soak in the water for a long time before it's gonna plump back up. It's probably not gonna ever look like a grape, but it's gonna it's gonna still pl uh, plump up and, uh, and gonna have some improvement for sure. So our brain, we need water for our brain. All the functions our brain does happens in water. It's all electricity up there. And we all know that electricity is conducted much better when things are wet, right? Like you would never drop an appliance like a blow dryer or something in the bathtub. If there's a, a down power line and there's a puddle there, you're going to like stay far away from that thing, right? Because we, we know the electricity and water is just, bam, it's much better conductor. But we want that up in our brain. We don't want, we don't want to be quart low basically, right? So if we're we need to put that in there to cushion the brain, the spinal cord, and all the other sensitive tissues. Again, we want to keep our cells nice and plump, our tissues nice and refreshed, and so that everything um, can can function as it should. So dehydration can cause the brain structure, and the, it can affect the structure of it. So it can actually, you know, the brain can shrink a little bit. And then the function of it. Um, and nobody wants to put their brain at risk, right? There's there's all, people think as we get older, all these things just happen to us because we get older. Again, a lot of the things that are happening to us in our lifestyle diseases, such as, you know, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and diabetes and heart disease and stroke and all these things, high blood pressure, or high blood cholesterol and high blood sugar, all these things are happening most of the time because people are doing the wrong things over a long period of time and our bodies are very resilient you know so just because we do one wrong thing one time it doesn't just sort of kick us in the pants and say hey stop that you know we're not going to feel that we're not going to really feel it being dehydrated one day you might feel a little bit of a headache or something like that and you're like yeah whatever and if you just get used to living that way eventually it's it doesn't bother you anymore you know, you, you just, that's your new normal. And so we want to not have those new normals. We want to keep ourselves in uh, optimal functioning levels always. And that would be your normal, right? That's where we want. So, uh, pr and prolonged dehydration can lead to problems with your memory and your thinking and your reasoning, all those kinds of things. So that's something we totally want to avoid at all costs. Um, body temperature helps with our body temperature. So water... It's stored in the middle layers of the skin and it comes to the surface uh, when we sweat. So as it evaporates, it cools the body off, right? So that's our body's cooling mechanism. It also helps to flush out toxins. You know, the more you sweat, the more toxins you're releasing. So 
if you're working out really hard and not drinking enough water, it's, there's not enough in there to allow you, your body to, to sweat very well and to effectively remove those toxins. And, um, it's just not, not so great for you. So, um, you know, some scientists are, are saying that when there's not enough water in the body, your heat storage increases, and then um, you're less able to tolerate the heat strain and heat stroke and things like that. So that's why we need, you know, especially in the summertime, we know that we need a lot of water in the summertime, and we're giving our kids water and putting their hats on and all those kinds of things. But just because the temperature gets cooler doesn't mean that we you know, we don't need enough, and especially when we're working out hard in the gym or um, maybe we have a very physical job, those kinds of things are really going to be taxing and you want to make sure that you're, um, you're thinking about that, right? So have a little think for a sec. We'll just take a little break and you can go grab yourself a glass of water and I'll be right back. You're listening to Tanya Gustafson and For the Health of It, exclusively on OkanaganValleyRadio.com. And now let's get back to the show. Okay, so we've all had our big drink of water. You filled up your water bottle and uh, we're ready to hear about why we need to keep doing that every day, all day, right? So now we're going to, uh, there's always a little bathroom talk when it comes to things to do with the bodies, right? And uh, so this is no different. Our digestive system, we need water to flush things through. It makes our bowels work properly, right? If you're not, if you don't have regularity, if you don't have good regularity, um, if you're not moving things through your system once a day, Check and see how much water you're drinking. You know, dehydration can lead to digestive problems, constipation, too much acid in the stomach, um, increases heartburn and the risk of ulcers and kidney stones, things like that. So you really want to make sure that um, you get enough in there, right? Keep things moving. Coffee's not going to do it. Uh, <laughs> coffee, let's just talk about coffee just for a second as we're here with liquids. Um, it's a diuretic, right? It, it makes... It actually takes the water out of your body, um, and that's not something that we want to happen. So it's, it's all right once in a while, but you want to uh, have water ideally before your coffee and then follow it up with a, with a glass of water after your coffee too, right? That would be the same as alcohol, and that would be the same as um, – sugary drinks or sports drinks, things like that, which I, you know, totally abhor and don't even recommend at all. And just a little aside here, a friend of mine a few years back, he was drinking, um, I'm not sure how much pop he was drinking, but he was drinking, you know, pop consistently every day, maybe a two liter a day or something like that. And um, so his wife just decided, nope, that's enough. We're going to get rid of that. And they just replaced it with water didn't do anything else um, to change their their diets or anything at the time. They just uh, they just got rid of the the soda pop, and within a month he had lost eighteen pounds. Right, so that's a significant amount. If you go to the grocery store next time, when you go go to over to the butter section and take a look at what eighteen blocks of butter looks like. You know he lost eighteen pounds just because he stopped drinking pop. He stopped drinking sugary drinks. So that would apply to, you know, your Gatorades and all your sodas and all those kinds of things. Um, and so get rid of them. You know, there are much better options out there, healthier supplements. Uh, if you're, if you're the Gatorade person and you're, you, you think you need it for your sports and stuff, there's a lot better, um, quality items out there that are not loaded with sugar or sugar substitutes. And, um, if you like something fizzy, get yourself, uh, one of those, um, you know, you can do it yourself and make your own uh, carbonated drinks and you can put your own uh, frozen berries in there to flavor it. You can put some fresh lemon in there or something or you just want the, you know, the bubbly water, right? Some people just like the, uh, the fizzy water like Perrier or something. So have that and put your own natural flavor in there if you need something like that. Lemon slices, lime slices, and then that's really awesome. You can make it at home. You can do that with your kids, you know, soda streams. That's what they're called, right? The soda stream. And uh, just avoid using the syrupy stuff. Like don't buy the syrupy con um, condiments and stuff that you can get to go with it. Make your bubbly yourself. Use your own uh, fruit at home to add to it. Um, ginger, lemon, fresh squeeze of orange in there, something like that. It's going to taste delicious. It's going to be so refreshing. And you're not getting the calories, number one. And you're not getting all the sugar, in number two. And so it's not putting toxins uh, into your body. Like sugar is actually a feeder of cancer, just an FYI there. So you want to reduce that wherever you can. I and mean, you don't want to drink your calories, right? Unless you're making some kind of a really healthy smoothie. You want to be eating some nutrient-dense calories and, and not just trying to chug down uh, whatever and not counting them. So 
thinking about that as you're choosing what beverage you're going to, to sip on uh, today. Um, flushes out the body's waste. Uh, we talked about the sweating and it also keeps the, the kidneys and, um, and liver flushing out. And those are our body's filtering systems. So again, back to the car analogy, if you have, uh, you know, your car taking it in for an oil change, changing all the fluids, all that kind of stuff, you're not going to tell the guy, Hey, just leave all those dirty filters in there and change all the oil and change all my fluids, but just leave the dirty filters in there. I mean, nobody does that, right? And so thinking about our bodies, our bodies um, have filters too, right? Your colon, liver, and kidney are our body's kind of filtering systems along with a few other ones, but those are kind of the big ones. And so you want to try and, and uh, flush, keep those flushed out and moving um, well so that there's nothing stores in there. We don't want kidney stones to build up in the kidneys. You know, liver doesn't typically show damage um, or stress until it's uh, not a really good situation. So we don't want to test that. And we only have one, right? So we want to take care of it. Um, all your airways need water too, believe it or not. If you're not getting enough water, it can actually make your asthma and your allergies worse because it's constricting your airways, trying to conserve water, right? Because as we're breathing out, there's moisture in our air. So your body is trying to reserve as much as it can if it doesn't have enough. Again, our bodies are very, very um, well, high functioning machines, you know, and it's it will take things in triage. So anybody ever remember the show MASH? I, I liked that show a long time ago. And they put put the patients through triage, right? Where they look at the patient and they decide um, who is more important, whose needs are greater, who needs to go into surgery first because they may die, who can wait a little while. Um, that's triage, right? So you can do that with a group of patients or you can do that within your own body. And our bodies do that very well on its own. So if there's, um, if we're lacking something in our body, um, the little amount that we have, our body uses it and sends it out to the places that require it the most. So, you know, brain, heart, lungs, organs, all those things that help to keep us alive. Because when it comes down to if there's just a little teeny amount, it comes down to life over limb, basically. It's like basic first aid. You know, if you're, if you're treating someone for first aid and they're in a burning car or the car may you know it explode or something you need to pull them out you might have to pull them out a little more quickly than you would if there was no danger and if they have a broken leg it's probably going to make it a little bit worse but the person would be alive and then you can go and work on that leg after so our bodies are operating under the same sort of concept all the goodness that we have that we put in there if we don't give it enough of everything that we need then it's going to use it for the things that keep us alive first, and then it uh, slowly will push that out to the, you know, in order of importance to where our bodies need it next and next and next. So if you're having some breathing issues or if your allergies, try drinking some more water. Try staying, um, keeping those um those airways open to help keep them open. And then of course we talked about it brings more oxygen through your body as well, too, right? We talked about that in the first half. So those two are going to work together, it's going to help you. And all these things, these little tips that we're talking about, and every time um, we're talking about things with our body and our health and nutrition and, and all that sort of stuff, I know that that people think, well, you know, that person who was 40 years old and he was running marathons and he had a heart attack. Yep, that happens. And it's very sad that it happens. However, had that person not been taking care of themselves, I mean, you don't have to run a marathon, but I would imagine that marathon runners are taking care of themselves much better than someone who doesn't exercise at all, right? So using that that thought process there, if, if um, the person's um, weren't wasn't taking care of themselves in a really good way, they might have had that heart attack ten years earlier or something like that, right? It just depends. We there's a bit of um, your family history that comes into play too, although not as much as people think. That's a whole other story. Um, but there's all these other things that come into play too. And so we just want to make sure that we're doing the best that we can to, you know, to get the results that we want. Water will also help to make your vitamins or your minerals and your nutrients more accessible in your body. There's certain ones that dissolve in water. 
and certain ones that we need uh, to consume fat to help them be soluble and have our body absorb. So with the water, when we're drinking that, that helps our, with our vitamin C or our B vitamins, the folic acid, our iron, niacin, uh, calcium, and riboflavin. All those things need to dissolve in water to make it possible for them to um, reach the different parts of our body. So again, if we're not giving it enough, that's a very slow delivery system to get it through the body. And so then if we're not having enough nutrients getting delivered through the body or a delayed uh, nutrients go going through the body, then again, that, that puts us, it compromises our health in some way, right? And for some people, everybody's different with inside our body and we do not know what's going on inside of there. But just know that the absence of any symptoms on the outside does not guarantee there's an absence of disease on the inside. It's, it's a pretty good indicator sometimes, but it's never a guarantee. And so just because you may look okay and feel okay at this point, ignoring some of these little things that are so easy to do um, is really not a good idea because you never know what's going on inside. So even if they're just little things, people say, oh, they're just little things. Well, if they're just little things, it shouldn't be that hard to do them, right? Um, prevents kidney damage. Yes, we talked about the kidneys um, because we don't want kidney stones. I have a friend, her husband, he suffers with kidney stones um, quite a bit. And um, there's a few other dietary things that you can do as well. Losing weight really helps. Um, and then, but uh, definitely having a lot of water will help to flush those kidney stones out and uh, prevent things from storing up and uh, crystallizing. And that's the part that makes the stones, right? Um, Having being hydrated during your exercise in your at your gym or out for your run or your your Zumba class or whatever it is that you do or your yoga it enhances your performance during strenuous activities it can give you that little burst of energy because it's delivering the oxygen through your blood so um, we don't we want to you know perform optimally all the time right feel good feel energized feel like we've done a whole bunch of great things in, in our day and not get to the end of the day and just feel exhausted and wiped out like you've been hit by a truck and uh, being dehydrated will do that. Weight loss, here's a biggie. You can add that water in and it'll help you lose weight. So that right there is a motivator for people, especially this time of year. So we're gonna touch on these last two things um, right for this time of year because we're heading into the party season, we're heading into the Christmas parties. I know I've got one coming up with um, with a group, a business group that I belong to. We're having ours on Saturday night. My husband's got his work party coming up. There's all these functions. I was just at a ladies Christmas gala on Sunday night. And it's just, you know, there's so many things happening right now. I mean, even when you when you go shopping at Costco now, all the chocolates are, or all the, all the chocolates, all the samples are chocolate. Yeah, I was just at Costco yesterday, so I know this. And all these things are out there, right? Poking at us and saying, oh, taste me, taste me, try me, do this, do that. So drinking a lot of water when you're at these places or before and during and after will help to um, curb your appetite a little bit. It also gives you something to hold on to so that you're sipping, so that you're less likely to grab uh, the soda, the sugary drinks, the, um, the alcohol, whatever. Have one of those instead. That will probably cut your other beverage consumption in half. So that will be a huge win for you if you're going to several parties over the season, right? Think about it that way. Um, it also helps, like we said, flush out the toxins and everything. So if, you're, if you are uh, having a bit of alcohol, then having the, uh, the water and maybe some soda water with ice and lemon in between is going to really pr um, keep, keep you um, from having too much to drink and then suffering up with it the next day, right? Nobody wants to be suffering with that the next day. You want to stay hydrated. Um, and then uh, just touching on again with the holidays, that water is awesome. It also helps to flush out the sugar and salt that comes with a lot of the foods that we get when we eat out. We don't have a lot of control over those foods when we're eating out, right? We, when we make them at home, we limit those things and we just put on what, what we taste, but we're not typically using a lot of salt, a lot of sugar, a lot of sauces, a lot of rich things like that. And when we go out, especially this time of year, it's the time of indulgence, right? There's everything is out there. There's a sugary treat. There's, um, there's the salty chips. There's the, um, there's the um, 
little chocolate brownies and all those fun desserts and, and those kinds of things. So making sure you're flushing a lot with water to get rid of the bloat because at the end, you ever done that? You've gone to a big dinner and you thought you, you thought you didn't eat too much, you know, but you just still felt kind of bloated at the end. That can be because of the extra salt and sugar that is put into the um, the little treats or the dinner that you've had just to enhance the flavor. So especially if it's um, like a Christmas party or a buffet, you really don't have a lot of choice. You can't ask for those things to be prepared plain. If it's a plated service, you're usually a little bit, got, got a bit more leeway. You can ask for that and usually places are pretty accommodating. So just thinking about that as you're heading into the holiday season, just another tip. So those are my uh, 15 tips on why we need water and what you should be doing to get it in you. And as I said, uh, join me this afternoon if you're out and about and you want some more tips and some healthy chocolate treats that will actually help you burn fat, then um, check out, uh, come and see me down at my office at 1551 Sutherland. I'm inside Creative Healing Chiropractic and we're doing a fit and fabulous for the holidays party. So it's geared for ladies, help you avoid those collecting that holiday 10, you know, the holiday 10 pounds that sometimes packs on that we have to think about getting rid of come January. Well, no more, you don't have to do that. So it's a free event. Come down and see me, I'd love to meet you. We'll be starting the party at one o'clock should end about three o'clock and I'd love to meet you and uh, hopefully you can come down and uh, find some great tips that's going to help you win through the holidays this year and uh, make you feel really good when January comes around. You can also check out my website fuelignitethrive.com for a whole lot of gr great uh, Black Friday deals that are happening this weekend with my coaching and with some wonderful health products. And so I just invite you to go take a look at that. And uh, I will chat with you again next Saturday. This is Tanya Gustafson, your fit nutritionist with Fit Nutrition. Have a great weekend. You've been listening to For the Health of It with your host, Tanya Gustafson. Be sure to join her next week for more great health tips. If you missed any of her shows, you'll find them in the podcast archives at okanaganvalleyradio.com.